so, so a friend of mine made that video, and uh, well, it was responsible for it, and um, he's been to Social 19 before and talked about this, and here's what he said. <clears throat> The way the coffee or the cocoa industry works in the cocoa bean industry and chocolate industry is all the beans just sort of get all put together, mostly, unless you're buying very specialized beans or fair trade or so on. And this chocolate here, because it's not fair trade chocolate, he said, look, there's not a lot of slave chocolate in here, but, you know, Ivory Coast is one of the main producers of chocolate in the world. And so, there's not a lot of slave chocolate in there, but there's guaranteed that there's slave produced or harvested chocolate. Guaranteed. And most of the chocolate that we eat in the world has Ivory Coast slave produced chocolate. And that final statement by that young man it's like they're eating my flesh is really powerful because it's like you're eating his flesh. So now we've got to eat more chocolate. <laughs> and, well, hang on. Dude. Now you can have some chocolate. I'm done. I'm done. No? No So, how you, what, how you, how you feel? I mean, how, what's it like now watching that? Shitty. Can you operationalize that? I mean, nobody should look at that clip and feel like that's right for them to be treated that way. And they are. So how do you? What, what, so how do you come to feel shitty? Because you don't. People, my, myself included, I don't think about that when I buy chocolate or I'm eating it. Like, where it's come from, or like what those people go through. Uh huh. Yeah. You don't think about it. Do you know about it? I did actually. I saw that clip before. Oh really? Yeah. In LER 100, I think. Uh huh. Wow. And you? I was gonna say shitty too. That's. I feel like that's like a good word for it. Um, but I think that there's a lot of things that go on and have gone on in America that are um, a product Dude, of slavery. Hang on, that's not America. But go ahead. Right. Well. They go on in the world. Come in the world yeah. and are brought to or exist in America that are uh, products of slave labor that we don't realize. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree that it's shitty, but we don't realize it. And then even when we do, it's like, well, these things are still here and they still exist and they're still like here for our daily use or our daily consumption or whatever. So it's like, do we make the choice just not to use it? Or not? And then what is the alternative for that? So how do you not know about it, though? How, it, how, how, how would it be that you don't know about it? Well, actually, I'd seen a clip similar to this, but I never saw them talk before. I never seen them actually interview the boys uh -huh. and, okay. or the men. So you, so you saw a clip and yeah. you... I've never seen it before. So how is that that you don't know that? Like, I, how, I mean, you know what I mean? Here, wait, hang on real fast. Jiggy, can you just get on your phone really fast and do a Google search for chocolate and slavery? And just tell us what we find. Like, how is it that you don't? How do you think you don't know about that? Well, for one, usually, well, I personally don't look up where most of my food comes from. And also, I feel like something like that wouldn't be publicized for um, our, like, media consumption just because usually uh, we don't like to atone for those kinds of things or, like, where things come from, especially if it's from, like, uh -huh. slave labor or anything that's negative, usually we don't want it to be associated with like happy things like chocolate, so. Yeah, okay. Gee, what do you find? Give me some quick things. Give me the top 
things in the search? Um, there's a website that says child labor and slavery in the chocolate industry, but when you click it, it says forbidden page, so I don't know what happened to it. Um, but the second one after that says slave-free chocolate, so I'm guessing that there's already a movement out there that is All right. All right, uh, keep going. trying to make that happen. Um, Fortune wrote an article about inside big chocolates, child labor problem, um, about the chocolate industry. All right, keep going. Give me like just the top five things. Chocolate and slavery. Wikipedia has children and cocoa production. Um, nine popular chocolate brands that exploit child slaves. Yeah. I mean, what, what I find interesting really is that, so you're saying like, well, we don't really look up things, right? We don't know. And I think, well, here, it's interesting. It's like two words, chocolate and slavery. And... The two words could be racism and the police, or it could be like white and supremacy. It could be anything, right? But it's like people don't look that up. And the question would be, well, why don't we look things up about other people? Like, why don't we know? You, you've seen the clip before. You still love chocolate. It's like, come on, man. So my question to you is, you're, you come from Jamaica. So Jamaica was a slave port. So your ancestors were slaves, Okay. <laughs> Your ancestors were probably not, probably these people are treated worse than your ancestors, I have to say, by the way, okay? Because I do a fair amount of study of slavery, and I will say that in all likelihood, your ancestors were, were treated better than they were, okay? Now, here's the question, and not treated very well, mind you, okay? What would your ancestors say to you if they knew that you even had an idea that this happened and you never did a Google search with those two simple words and you still ate chocolate. And you know you're eating the flesh of another one of who somebody who could have been your ancestor. Like what would they say to you? Just out of curiosity. They probably wouldn't be happy. They would not be happy? No. And? I mean, they'll probably say like, we're going through this and you're con essentially contributing to the same slavery that we're going through right now. So like their progeny, their future progeny are actually going to be maintaining or continuing a condition of enslavement for other people that they experience. And you like of all people, you know, you know what I mean? Like look, as a West Indian black woman whose ancestry is African slaves, of all people in this room, you are in the top of the list of people who you would think one might imagine would go to your phone and be like, shit, slavery, chocolate, like whole, I got to study, I got to look into this. Like, I don't want to perpetuate this. And you're not. You didn't. And it takes a white man to come along and say, what's happening? Do you have a response to that? It takes a white man to come along and like be like, why aren't you doing something about that? Like, what, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if you're more responsible than me or than this guy here who's from Iran, right? No, Yemen. Yemen, same thing. Isn't it the same country? No. Yemen. <laughs> who's from Yemen. I don't know if he's responsible. I don't know. You know what I mean? But what is that? Like, you know what I mean? You must have heard something about modern day slavery though, right? I feel like I've heard it more in the sense of like the school to prison pipeline, like those kind of like, you okay. know, institutionalized um, modern day slavery, but like not so much things that go on outside of um, the U.S. personally. So in, in all like, you know, look, according to people who study slavery in the modern age, there are more slaves today than at any point in human history. Any point in human history. And the conditions of slaves today are worse than at any point in human history. So it's like, I think, as much as I hear people, in particular, I hear black people talking about slavery and talking about the conditions and understanding of slavery, conditions of that black people experience that are all linked to slavery, because you said it, I think, I know you said it. It's like, I would think that somebody would stop, that more people would stop and get their phones and say, I, I gotta look into this because I don't want to be part of the problem. And yet we don't. And so I'm thinking about my ancestors. And I'm thinking about 
my ancestors who knew less about slavery than we all do today. Because most people in the United States, they heard something about slavery. They had an idea of slavery. They knew, but they didn't see photos of slaves. They didn't have firsthand accounts of slaves. This is before telephones and before all sorts of materials. We'd photographs, videos, we have nothing. So most people just hear about this thing called slavery but don't even know about it. And they certainly can't even get on their phones and look at and even see a couple of photos, let alone watch a video. And so I think if I go back 150 years, 180 years, 200 years, I'm thinking, well, a lot of people really have an out on that because all they do is hear about slavery, but they never see anything, so they don't really know. But we have the opportunity to know, all of us in here. But now I'm just talking to the two of you. And I'm like, wow, you don't know. I'm thinking, well, that must be what happened to all the white people back then. Like, because I hear people all the time saying, well, why don't they know? And why didn't they know? And how, is, how could it keep going? I'm like, well, this is how it keeps going. You even heard about it. So if I can go back 107 years and someone's saying, well, all those slaves in the South are picking cotton and so on and so forth, and, but you're buying all this slave-made cotton, people probably said, well, what else am I going to buy? And that's just what you said. Well, I like chocolate. Well, I like cotton. Well, I like all these things. So nobody's responsible then. You know what I mean? Like, who's responsible? Who's responsible? Now, I'm pushing the two of you really hard, okay? Like, I'm really pushing you hard because I'm, I'm not, I know you're on the spot in a big, in a serious way, especially as, as black women, right? Like, you are really on the spot, okay? And I have you on the spot for a reason because I want to, because I actually, what I want is for all of these people to feel on the spot. But the more I put you on the spot, the more I can do it with them. It's like, what do we do then? Who's responsible? Who's responsible? I think consumers are responsible because if more people knew or more, I, should, I, th I think I should say more people, if more people cared, then they can make changes because companies would listen and okay. they would. You ready? If I start your sentence out with this, if I cared more, then finish that sentence. You start, start this, say it, repeat after me. If I actually cared more about things like slaves, if I people like slaves. If I actually cared more for people like slaves, then, then I would. I would. Okay, answer that. Stop buying chocolate. I don't know what the answer is. But you were talking about it as though it's like out there. If people, 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 people. But one of the issues is like we don't sit in the seat, right? And so I want to, no, 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 sit right there. If you cared more about your ancestors, then you would do what regarding the people now who are experiencing what your ancestors experienced? Well, for me as a person, I could buy fair trade chocolate or stop consuming chocolate that's produced by slaves. Mm -hmm. And by the way, to complicate this more, my friend says, hey, who's really done, he's one of the world's experts on slavery, said, don't stop buying slave made goods. <laughs> like, that's not the answer. Don't just stop buying it. Like, that actually doesn't help. Right? There are other things that help. So, like, we can get into that later. What do you think about me putting her on the spot like that? Be honest. I feel like we should be used to this in this class. Um, <laughs> but I, I feel like it makes it probably more personal for you just because you know where you're from. So, I feel like that's, like, probably what makes it more uncomfortable for her and what makes it more of an on-the-spot thing is because she knows where she's from and she has like more of a direct like correlation to the people that you just showed. Like you said, yep. she's from Ivy Coast or they're, they're from Ivy Coast and yeah. she's from like a similar place. So. Okay, so let me ask you one final question. What are you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Like not five years down the road. Like, what are you going to do right tomorrow about this issue? 
Someone comes along and says, hey man, yo, check out these, they got these chocolate chip cookies I just made with this cool Hershey's chocolate. And the chocolate chip cookie is really nice looking and you're hungry. I feel like, me personally, when I hear things like this, I usually want to make a difference, but personally, I'd probably just do more research on what I eat. I feel like that's the most effective thing that I can do just singularly on my own to not help. But I guess if you said that just stop by, just not buying the products doesn't really help anything, then my question would be, what should I do? And then maybe I can follow that. Cool. And I'm not going to answer that for you. I'm going to actually make you use your phone and search for the answer. I will also say, I'm wondering what that guy would say. I wonder what he would say. Yeah. I don't know. All right. And by the way, let me also say the following to you all. It's really important for all of us in here to see the ways in which we all need to be pushed and challenged on all these issues. And I will also, and one final, so that's important. The other thing is, most of the things that the two of you probably assume are just kind of given about the experience of black and brown people in the world, in the United States in particular, because there's a lot of white supremacy here. Well, we bear, I just sort of tapped it a little bit last class. We'll touch on it more, but most of the stuff that you just assume is second nature and that everyone really should see, most of the people in this classroom just don't see it because they just don't see it. Just like we don't see this. So we don't know. And I think a lot of times what I hear, especially from black people, is like, how can you not know? How do you not see this? How you not? It's like, dude, how do you not know about chocolate? Why do you got, why does this like 56 year old sociologist got to come along and talk about slavery and chocolate when it's just two words? It's all over the media. I see it all the time. It's like it's right there. Yeah, well, we're busy doing other things. So we're all in the same boat in some ways. I mean, we're not because I'm not in the same, you're not in the same boat as I'm in. Yeah, but. Hey, Cool. Thanks. You didn't eat your chocolate, by the way. You don't have to. Thanks. I'll take it back if you're not going to eat it. Yeah. Hey, thanks. By, hey, by the way, thanks. Seriously. Yeah. No, you really were on the spot here. Probably more than anybody all semester. Because this is really big. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Hey. Cool. Jiggy, what do you think about that? Um, you were eating chocolate ice cream, am I right? Because your boy gave it to me. Uh, <laughs> um, so when I took this class five, six years ago now uh, and had this lecture, I ate the chocolate the first time. Um, and then the second time, after we watched the video, he asked, he, uh, back in the day, he like gave all of us chocolate, actually, um, Hershey Kisses or something. And the second time, I didn't eat it after watching the video. Um, because, of course, in the moment, I felt a little guilt and shame. Like, how could I not know this? And what can I u do to use this information and move forward? Um, but now it's five, six years later, and I had chocolate like last night, and I just had chocolate ice cream. Um, so all of this thinking, like, it, it, it just, I don't, have, I don't have anything to contribute to the class, but it's, I have a wonder, like a thought. Like, when, you know how when you have so much to do, you have so much to do that you just end up taking a nap instead? Because um, <laughs> it's true. I went to college too. Um, so, like... As much as we push information into people's brains and let them learn about these new things, like, hey, did you know that this is wrong with the world? Hey, did you know that this is wrong with the world? Could it, it I just think it's so interesting that like, the more we learn, you will think that it motivates us to like, go home and do something about it, but then could it be that we're so overwhelmed by what's wrong with the world that we almost like step away and then end up taking a nap? Um, 
and maybe that's why, like, I don't know, like, I don't want the girl to feel bad that, like, right now she didn't eat chocolate, but then tomorrow she's going to eat chocolate and feel guilty. Like, I don't, want her, I don't want her to feel guilty or anything like that. But it's just, like, I think what makes passion so special is that not everyone shares the same passion. So somebody, somebody not, not those two, but somebody here could take this and go home and do something about it, while the two volunteers could go home and work on something that they're passionate about. But I don't, I just don't want them to go home and have chocolate and then feel guilty just because they don't, just don't feel pulled to do something about it just because you yeah. said yo, so or yo, that Jiggy. you question it. So I have a question. Also for the class, like, does the shitty feeling come from actually feeling bad about the fact that you're eating chocolate or does the shitty feeling come from the fact that you don't actually care? Whoa. But then you can't blame people for not knowing how to care, either. No, no, hang on. That's just a big... I think that's just like question number one, but then I have a following question, like number, question number two. It's like, of course people aren't going to care about something that they don't empathetically feel connected to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's just so much going on in the world, and it's just... Damn. No, no, dude, dude, hang on, hang on. I just want to drop that question, that third question in the proverbial punch bowl again. Does the shitty feeling come from the fact that of what's going into the chocolate or does the shitty feeling come from the fact that you don't really care? And that is a huge, beautiful question. 